Chapter 1 Many years ago, there was a lad from Loxley Town. This lad had deep blue eyes and hair the colour of gold, and he always carried a bow. One day, the lad saw a poster. It was for an archery competition in faraway Nottingham Town. I am good with a bow and arrow. I can win that, he thought. So he began walking. The journey from Loxley to Nottingham was long, but the sun was shining and the birds were singing. The lad walked happily along. Soon he came to a great forest and he met a group of men. They were eating under a tree. One of them looked up and spoke. He was ugly with big ears. Hey, boy, he said, his mouth full of food. Where are you going with that old bow? The others laughed, but the lad smiled. I'm going to Nottingham, he said calmly, to win the archery competition. When the men heard this, they laughed again, but the ugly one laughed the loudest. Do you see that deer in the distance? he asked. Hit it and you can have all the money in my bag. Without a word, the lad lifted his bow and fired. His arrow flew through the air. It hit the deer and killed it. The men couldn't believe their eyes. They stared at the lad. No one could hit a deer from so far away. No one. The lad smiled. I think you owe me some money. The ugly man jumped to his feet. Go away, he shouted. Go on, go away. The lad didn't want to start a fight, so he turned and began walking again in the direction of Nottingham. But the ugly man was angry now. Suddenly, he lifted his bow and fired at the lad. Just in time, the lad turned and the man's arrow flew past him. It missed. The lad fired back at the man. His arrow didn't miss. It hit the man's heart and killed him there and then. Murderer! the men cried. Catch him! But the lad disappeared into the trees. Later, the group of men went to Nottingham to tell the sheriff about the death. The dead man was a cousin of the sheriff of Nottingham. The sheriff was furious when he heard the news. Two hundred pounds for the murderer's head, he shouted. And so the lad was now an outlaw and the sheriff was his enemy. He could no longer return to Loxley or go to Nottingham as a free man. But the lad with deep blue eyes and hair the colour of gold was safe. Deep in the green forest, he lay and dreamed of adventures to come. And so began many adventures. Because the forest was Sherwood Forest, and the lad's name was Robin Hood. Chapter 2 A year passed. Robin was now the leader of a group of 100 men. They were all outlaws and lived in Sherwood Forest near Nottingham. They stole from the rich and helped the poor. But they never hurt a woman or a child. People called them Robin Hood and his merry men, and everybody loved them. One day, Robin was bored, so he decided to have an adventure. He took his staff and his horn, and he went for a walk in the forest alone. It was a beautiful morning, and Robin came to a river 
with a narrow bridge across it. He stopped and rested. He was enjoying the sun on his face and thinking happy thoughts. When he saw a man like a giant, he was nearly seven feet tall, with a thick black beard and shoulders as wide as an oak tree. This man was on the other side of the river. He was walking with his head down, and in his hand he was carrying a staff. Time to have some fun, thought Robin, and he quietly ran to the middle of the bridge and waited. Good day, said Robin, when the giant was in front of him. The giant looked up, surprised. Good day, he replied. Robin smiled. After a minute, the man spoke again. Excuse me, sir, said the man. Please move out of my way. No, dear sir, please move out of my way. The man stared at Robin. Get out of my way. Robin laughed. But, my dear sir, I was here first. The man's face turned red with anger. Move, he shouted, and he swung his staff at Robin's head. Robin lifted his staff to fight. Crash! Their staffs met. For nearly an hour, the two men fought. The giant was strong, and Robin was fast. But at last, Robin made a mistake, and thump! The giant hit him hard. Robin's head hurt, and he fell off the bridge and landed in the river. Splash! The giant laughed. <sighs> Are you enjoying your bath? Robin looked up and, rubbing his head, he laughed too. He climbed out of the water and blew three times on his horn. Suddenly, out of the trees came twenty of Robin's men. The first to arrive was Will Stutely. Robin, said Will, you are all wet. What happened? Robin pointed to the giant on the bridge. He knocked me into the river. Then he's going to have a bath too, said Will. Get him, lads. Wait, said Robin. Don't hurt him. It was fun. We fought a fair fight and he won. Robin looked at the giant. What is your name? he asked. They call me John Little. When they heard this, Robin and his men laughed. Will Stutely shouted, No, you are not Little John. Do you want to trick me? The giant shouted and lifted his staff again. Robin put a hand on the giant's shoulder. No, he said, don't be angry. Come with me and have something to eat. The giant scratched his big black beard. Slowly, a smile spread across his face. He hit Robin on the back in a friendly way and said, All right, I agree. And so from that day, John Little became Little John. He joined the merry men of Sherwood, sharing in all their adventures, and soon he became Robin's right-hand man. Chapter 3 The Sheriff of Nottingham was Robin's greatest enemy. He hated Robin because Robin killed his cousin and because Robin was an outlaw. But most of all, the sheriff hated Robin because everyone else loved him.
One day, the sheriff had an idea. I am going to have an archery competition, he told his men. Robin is going to come to it, and I am going to catch him and kill him. The sheriff's men were surprised. It was a good idea. Soon, posters were everywhere. They invited all the great archers to come to Nottingham. The first prize, the poster said, was a beautiful golden arrow. On the day of the competition, the town was as busy as a beehive. Many of England's most famous archers were there. The townspeople had their favourite archers and shouted out their names. But there was one unknown archer. He wore red clothes. He had a dark beard, dark hair and a patch over one eye. Nobody knew him. Who was this strange man? Suddenly, trumpets blew. The archery competition was about to start. The great crowd went quiet. One after the other, the archers lifted their bows and fired their arrows. The crowd cheered and the judges chose the best shots. Now, there were only ten men in the competition. The sheriff looked closely at the ten men, but he couldn't see Robin. He is a coward, he thought. He didn't come. The ten archers took their neck shots. The crowd cheered and threw their hats in the air. All ten arrows hit the target, and the judges chose the best. Now there were only three men in the competition. Adam Dell, Jill Redcap, and the Red Stranger with one eye. The three archers lifted their bows again, and the crowd became silent. The archers had one shot each. Jill Redcap shot first, and his arrow struck the centre of the target. The sheriff stood and clapped. Great shot! The best one today! he shouted. Adam Dell was next, but his arrow didn't strike the centre. Last of all was the stranger. He lifted up his bow and fired his arrow. It struck the centre of the target and broke Jill Redcap's arrow in two pieces. The crowd cheered and clapped. The sheriff couldn't believe his eyes. What is your name? he asked the stranger. Jock Teviotdale, the man answered. Come and join me. I need men with your skill said the sheriff. No thanks, said Jock. I don't need a boss. The sheriff became angry, but he knew the crowd was watching. Smiling, he gave the stranger the golden arrow. But in a quiet voice he said, Go and do not come back to Nottingham. The stranger with one eye lifted up the golden arrow, and the crowds cheered and cheered. No one could shoot an arrow like him. He was the best archer in England. That night, the sheriff sat in the great hall of his castle. Why did Robin Hood not come today? Why didn't my plan work? he asked his men, but no one had an answer. Suddenly, an arrow flew through a window and hit the sheriff's table. On the arrow, there was a note.
The sheriff jumped up and read the piece of paper. When he read the words on it, he was furious. Jock Teviotdale laughed today, and all the men in Sherwood. The sheriff gave the prize away to Merry Robin Hood. Chapter 4 For a whole year, Robin didn't see the sheriff. Then, one morning, Robin decided to have another adventure. It was market day in Nottingham, and a butcher was travelling there. Robin had an idea. He bought all the butcher's meat and went to town in the butcher's old clothes. When Robin arrived in Nottingham, he stood next to all the other butchers in the marketplace. He cut up the meat and started to sell it. For the poor, the meat was free. For young ladies, he asked only for a kiss. The meat sold quickly, and soon there was a big crowd around Robin. The men in the marketplace began to talk about this new butcher. I think he's rich, said some. I think he's mad, said others. Soon, news of this new butcher reached the sheriff's ears, and he decided to visit the marketplace. When the sheriff saw the new butcher, he smiled. Here's an easy one to cheat, he thought. I'm going to have a feast, the sheriff said to Robin. Come and be my guest. Robin quickly agreed and went to the sheriff's castle. Soon the feast began and everyone was laughing and enjoying themselves. The sheriff sat down next to Robin. Tell me about yourself, he said. So Robin did. First, he told the sheriff about his many brothers. Next, he told the sheriff about needing money. Last of all, he told the sheriff about his 500 horned animals. When the sheriff heard about these animals, his eyes shone with greed. Sell your cows to me, he said, and you can have 300 pounds. The other men at the feast heard this too, and they shook their heads. The sheriff was trying to cheat the butcher. The men knew the butcher could sell his cows in another town for 500 pounds or more. They were sad for the butcher, but they couldn't say anything. Well, said Robin, my brothers and I need money, and 300 pounds is a lot of money. All right, I accept. Excellent, said the sheriff, but I want to see these animals with my own eyes. Robin shook hands with the sheriff. Come with me tomorrow, then you can see them. The next day, Robin and the sheriff rode into Sherwood Forest. The sheriff was carrying a money bag with 300 pounds in it. What about the outlaws around here? The sheriff asked. 300 pounds is a lot of money. Don't worry about them, replied Robin. The sheriff tried not to worry, but he couldn't. Deeper and deeper into the forest they rode, and more and more the sheriff grew afraid. Suddenly, between the trees, they saw a huge herd of deer. Look, said Robin, pointing to the deer. Those are my horned animals. How do you like them? What? 
They're not cows, they're deer, and they belong to the king. Is this a trick? shouted the sheriff. Robin laughed and blew on his horn three times. A second later, Little John and many others arrived. Now the sheriff understood. The butcher was Robin Hood. He began to shake. He didn't want to die. Don't worry, said Robin. You gave me a feast, and now I must give one to you. Let's go. So Robin took the sheriff to his camp, and the feast began. Robin's men sang and danced, and the sheriff ate and laughed. The sheriff enjoyed himself, and he almost forgot he was in Robin Hood's camp. When the feast ended, the sheriff stood up. It was dark, and he was ready to go home. Well, he said, I must go. Thank you for the feast. You're welcome, replied Robin. But before you go, you must pay for the food. Yes, of course. How much? asked the sheriff. In his hand, he had a few small coins. Three hundred pounds, said Robin, and smiled. Chapter 5 It was a fine morning, and under the shade of a tree, Robin was lying on his back and looking up into the clear blue sky. He was thinking about money. Suddenly, he sat up. Let's invite someone to a feast tonight, he said to his men. Who are you going to invite? asked Robin's nephew, Will Scarlet. Someone with lots of gold, of course, replied Robin. He turned to Will Stutely. Take my nephew and Arthur Bland and go and find a rich guest for our feast. Will Stutely was one of the first men to join Robin's merry men. He knew all about roads with rich travellers on them. Let's go to Fossway, he said, and Will Scarlet and Arthur agreed. Fossway was many miles from Robin's camp, but the men walked quickly, and after a few hours, they reached there. When they arrived, they found a hiding place and had lunch. Then they watched the road, and they waited, and they waited, and they waited. Many people walked past. An old woman with eggs to sell. A shepherd. Some young farmers. But everyone was honest and poor. There wasn't one rich traveller. When the sun was falling and the sky was turning red, Arthur Bland spoke. Let's go home, he said. Today is not our lucky day. I agree, replied Will Scarlet. We can come back another time. Wait, said Will Stutely. Can you hear that sound? It's coming from the forest. Arthur and Will Scarlet listened. Now they could hear it too. Come on, said Will Stutely, and he ran ahead. Perhaps it's a rich traveller he thought. But he was wrong. There, under a tree, sat a young man with golden hair. He was crying and looking very sad. Beside him was a harp made of gold and silver. When the young man saw the three merry men, he picked up his bow and arrow. Relax, friend, 
said Arthur. We are not going to rob you. What is your name? Alan Dale, replied the young man. Alan Dale, said Arthur. Are you the famous singer? The young man said he was. Why were you crying? asked Will Scarlet. But that made Alan cry even more. I have a broken heart, explained Alan, still crying. Will Scarlet felt sorry for Alan. Come with us to our camp, he said. Perhaps we can help you. It was a long walk back to the camp. When they arrived, the moon was shining in the night sky and owls were calling from the trees. Robin smiled when he saw the four men. Good evening, he said, shaking Alan's hand. You're Robin Hood, said Alan, his eyes growing wide. That is correct, sir, said Robin. And you are a rich guest with lots of gold coins. Alan shook his head. No, I'm only a poor singer. All I have is my harp. What? shouted Robin. He was angry with his men. Why did you bring this lad here? The poor lad is Alan Dale, and he has a broken heart. Maybe we can help him, said Will Scarlet. Robin's voice grew gentler. Is this true? he asked Alan. Do you have a broken heart? Alan said he did, and he told Robin and his men all about his problems. He was in love with Ellen, the most beautiful girl in Nottingham. Ellen wanted to marry him, but Ellen's father wanted her to marry Sir Stephen of Trent, a very rich and very old man. The wedding was in two days' time. Robin thought for a while. Then he said, Don't worry, I can help you. But first you must join our group of merry men. Alan didn't think twice. I agree, he said. So Robin told him his plan. Chapter 6 Robin's plan was simple. He wanted the friar of Fountain Abbey to marry Alan Dale and Ellen. So the next day, Robin, Little John and Will Scarlet began their journey to find him. They walked for miles, singing and laughing the whole time. And after a while, they came to a river. The friar lives near here, said Will Scarlet. I can take you to him. No, said Robin. I want to go alone. But if you hear my horn, come quickly. Little John and Will Scarlet agreed, and Robin said goodbye to his friends. The river was clear, but it was also deep. Robin followed it, looking for places to cross. He was still searching when he heard voices. He stopped and listened. The voices continued, but there was something strange about them. Robin quietly moved forward. There, under a tree next to the river, lay a friar with a big round face. Around him there was a feast. The friar was smiling and, in his hand, there was a piece of pie. Please have some of this, he said to himself. Thank you very much. You are very kind, he replied. He was giving himself food with one hand and accepting it with the other. 
Robin wanted to laugh, but he didn't want the friar to hear. He decided to have some fun. Hello, dear friar, Robin shouted, jumping out from his hiding place and landing next to the food. The piece of pie flew into the air. Help, the friar cried. He jumped to his feet and searched for his sword. I am sorry to frighten you, dear sir, said Robin, not feeling sorry at all and trying hard not to laugh. But I am looking for the friar of Fountain Abbey. Do you know him? The friar saw his pie lying on the ground. He stared angrily at Robin. Perhaps, he replied. Does he live on the other side of the river? Robin asked. Perhaps, replied the friar again. I must speak to the friar, said Robin, but I don't want to go into the river. I hate wearing wet clothes. So what? said the friar, still angry. So please carry me across the river, replied Robin. What? Are you asking me to carry you on my back? The friar's face was red with anger, but then it changed. Slowly, he began to smile. Wait, he said. Why not? Good, said Robin. He jumped onto the friar's back and they started to cross the river. When they were in the deepest part, the friar suddenly stopped. Then, without warning, he threw Robin over his shoulder and into the water. Splash! The friar laughed and got out of the water. Robin got out too. He was angry. He took out his horn and blew three times. Ha! he said as Little John and Will Scarlet came running through the trees towards them. Here come my men. Ha! said the friar. He took out his whistle and blew on it three times. And here come my dogs, he said. Four dogs came running straight towards Robin. They had their mouths open and their teeth ready. Get him, fangs, sweet lips, bell throat and beauty, shouted the friar. The dogs chased Robin up a tree. Run, shouted Robin to Will Scarlet, but Will didn't move. When the dogs ran towards him, he put out his hand and the dogs licked it. Robin couldn't believe his eyes. It's safe to come down, uncle, Will Scarlet said. Slowly, Robin came down from the tree. Will Scarlet and the friar were shaking hands and laughing. Do you know each other? Robin asked. Yes, answered Will. The friar was a friend of my father. I'm sorry, said Robin to the friar. I only wanted to find the friar of Fountain Abbey and have a little fun. I am the friar of Fountain Abbey, but people usually call me Friar. Now who are you? Robin smiled. I, he said, am the very wet Robin Hood. Chapter 7 On the day of Ellen's marriage to Sir Stephen Trent, Robin woke up early and put on different clothes. He gathered his men around him to hear his plan. The men listened carefully. For part of the plan, they needed some money. Do you have two bags of gold? 
Robin asked Little John. I do, he replied. Good, bring them, said Robin. Then he put Alan's harp over his shoulder and led twenty of his merry men through the forest towards the church. When they were near the place, Robin sent David Doncaster up a tree. David watched the road. When he saw an old friar with some keys, he told Robin. Robin turned to Friar Tuck. Go quickly after the old friar, he said. When you are inside the church, open the back door. Friar Tuck ran after the old friar. Hello, he said. Is there a wedding here today? The old friar and Friar Tuck started talking. Soon, the old friar invited Friar Tuck to come into the church. The first part of Robin's plan was complete. Then David called again from the tree. The Bishop of Hereford is coming. Robin quickly ran to the church and sat outside. The bishop was wearing expensive clothes and around his neck there was a thick gold chain. Who are you? the bishop asked when he saw Robin. I am a harp player, replied Robin. Do you play well? When a man and a woman hear my harp, said Robin, they fall in love forever. The bishop laughed. If you can make the bride at this wedding love her groom, you can have a great reward. Come inside and play. Then Sir Stephen, Ellen and her father arrived. Robin saw Ellen for the first time. She is very beautiful, he thought, and he followed all of them into the church. Robin smiled. The second part of his plan was complete. The wedding started, and soon the bishop was ready to marry Sir Stephen to Ellen. But before the bishop could finish, Robin jumped up. Stop, he cried. He took out his horn and blew three times. Suddenly, the church was full of Robin's men, swords in hand. When Ellen saw Alan, she ran to him and kissed him. Who are you? shouted Ellen's father to Robin. My name is Robin Hood. When Robin said his name, there was silence. Then Ellen's father spoke again. My daughter must marry Sir Stephen, he said. But then Sir Stephen stood up and spoke. I do not want to marry her, he said. I did not know that she loves another man. But you promised to marry her, cried Ellen's father. Little John, said Robin. Give me the bags of gold. Robin took the, ba the bags and gave them to Ellen's father. Take these and be happy, he said. Your daughter is going to marry her true love. Ellen's father took the money. He wasn't happy, but no one cared. Friar Tuck married Ellen Dale to Ellen and the two of them were very happy. But you need a wedding present, said Robin. He looked at the bishop's gold chain and smiled. Here is my present, he said, lifting the chain from the bishop's neck and handing it to Ellen. Oh, I almost forgot, said Robin, turning to the bishop again. We are going to have a feast. Do you want to come? The bishop was very afraid. He knew all about Robin's feasts. Thank you, he said, but I can't. Robin laughed. Another time, perhaps, he said. Then he and his men left the church and returned to Sherwood Forest. 
That night they had their feast. Around the great fire, everyone sang and danced and ate and laughed. Alan and Ellen were happy. The merry man were happy, and Robin was happy too. His plan was complete. Chapter 8 In Sherwood Forest, the leaves were changing from green to brown. One cold, clear morning in early September, Robin woke up and counted all the merry men's money. There wasn't much. Wake up, everybody, he shouted. It is time for us to find another rich guest. Little John woke up slowly. What is your plan? he asked sleepily. You go west and I go east. Then we try to find the richest man in England and bring him here. Little John was awake now. Sounds good, he said. And soon both of them began their search. Robin walked for miles along roads, through forests and across fields. He saw many people, but none of them were rich. After a while, he stopped for lunch. He was eating when he saw a knight. Robin looked at the knight's expensive clothes and beautiful horse. A rich guest for our feast, he thought. Hello, good sir, said Robin, when the knight was in front of him. The knight stopped, but said nothing. His face was full of sadness. What a sad face! You need a good feast to cheer you up, said Robin. I have no reason to be happy, said the knight. Who are you? My name is Robin Hood. Who are you? For a moment, the knight's eyes grew wide. He knew all about Robin Hood's feasts. But then he looked sad again. I am Sir Richard Lee, he said. But I have no money to give you for your feast. You are wasting your time with me. But why? asked Robin. You are a knight, and knights are rich men. Sir Richard sighed. My son killed another knight by accident, and I had to pay a fine, a huge fine. To get the money, I had to borrow from the Priory of Emmet. Now I must return that money to the Priory, or lose my land and my castle. Do you have the money to pay the Priory? No, I do not. Robin felt sorry for the knight. Come with me, he said. Perhaps I can help you. Sir Richard agreed, and he followed Robin back to Sherwood Forest. When they arrived at the camp, it was dark and a big fire was burning. Robin told Sir Richard to relax, eat and enjoy himself. Then Robin saw little John. Did you find a rich guest? he asked. Little John laughed. Yes, I did. Then show him. Little John brought forward his guest, and Robin recognised him at once. The Bishop of Hereford, Robin said. We meet again. Welcome to our feast. The Bishop was furious. But he didn't say anything. He was too afraid of Robin and his men. Robin saw that the bishop was holding a box tightly in his hands. How are you going to pay for your feast? asked Robin. But before the bishop could answer, Robin knocked the box out of the bishop's hand with his sword. The box hit the ground and thousands of gold coins fell out of it. 
So Richard came forward, and Robin pointed to him. Do you know this man? Robin asked the bishop. Yes, replied the bishop. Does he owe you money? He owes money to the Priory of Emmet, and I am the bishop for the Priory. I understand, said Robin. And are you the richest bishop in England? Many people say that you are. I don't know, said the bishop. Perhaps. Robin started to count the coins. I think you have plenty of money, he said. I also think you want to help, Sir Richard. When there were five hundred coins in Robin's hands, he gave them all to Sir Richard. Take this, he said, and pay your fine. Now you can keep your land and castle. The bishop watched in horror as Sir Richard took the money, but again he said nothing. Soon Sir Richard left the camp with the five hundred gold coins. He thanked Robin Hood and his men. One day, he said, I hope I can repay your great favour. After that, Robin freed the bishop. The bishop left the camp quietly, but when he was far away and no one could hear him, he said, One day I'm going to make Robin Hood very, very sorry for stealing my money. Wait and see. Chapter 9 Many weeks later, Little John and Will Scarlet were returning to Sherwood Forest on a warm summer day. They were walking along the road when a young man stopped them. I am looking for Robin Hood, the young man said. Do you know him? Little John and Will smiled. The young man was on a beautiful white horse, and he was wearing expensive clothes. Another rich guest for our feast, whispered Little John to Will. Who are you? he asked loudly. My name is Richard Partington, said the young man, and I am Queen Eleanor's aide. I must speak with Robin Hood. I have a message from the Queen. When Little John and Will heard this, they took the young aide straight to Robin. What does Queen Eleanor want with an outlaw like me? Robin asked when he met the aide. The Queen wants you to come to an archery competition in London, he replied. Robin bowed. If Queen Eleanor wants me there, then I must go. At once, Robin, Little John and Will Scarlet began their journey to London. A week later, on a bright and sunny morning, the three men arrived at Finsbury Fields in London. A huge crowd was there, and so were all the best archers in England. Everyone was waiting for King Henry and Queen Eleanor. Suddenly, there was the sound of trumpets. Then the king arrived on a grey horse, followed by the queen on a white one. The people clapped and cheered. The king and queen sat and the competition began. Robin and his men watched. At first, eighty archers competed, but soon only the best three remained. All three were the king's men. The king was delighted. There are no better archers in England than my men, he said. Do you agree, bishop? Yes, sire, said the bishop of Hereford. That is very true, sire. I am sorry, my dear king, but I disagree, said Queen Eleanor. I know of three more skillful archers 
and they are waiting to win the competition. The king laughed. Never. No one can beat my men, he said. The queen whispered something to Richard Partington. Then she spoke to the king again. Can you promise me something? she asked him. Can you promise to give a forty-day pardon for my archers? A forty-day pardon? Are they outlaws? Perhaps, said the queen. The king wasn't happy, but he wanted to beat the queen's archers. All right, he said. I agree. Your men can have a pardon for forty days. Now Richard Partington brought Robin and his men to meet the King and Queen of England. Here are my archers, said the Queen. As soon as the Bishop of Hereford saw Robin, he jumped up. My Queen, he shouted, this man is Robin Hood. Silly Bishop, of course it's Robin Hood, replied the Queen. The king's face grew red. He was angry with the queen, but he was also sure that his archers were better than hers. Begin! the king shouted, and the competition began again. First, the king's archers shot. Then, Robin and his men. The crowd cheered each time. It took a long time, but after many shots, there were only two men left, Robin and the king's archer, Gilbert. Robin and Gilbert shot again ten times. Both shot well, but Robin's ten arrows were so close together, they looked like one arrow. Robin was the winner. He took the prize. Thank you, sire. And he went to celebrate. The Bishop of Hereford and the King watched him go. The King was furious, and so was the Bishop. One hated to lose, and the other hated Robin. The Bishop began telling the King all about Robin. He told the King about the trouble at Sir Stephen Trent's wedding, the gold chain and the stolen money. Queen Eleanor heard them talking. She was watching the king's face. It was growing angrier and angrier. She had to warn Robin and warn him fast. Richard Partington found Robin amongst the crowds. I have a message from the queen, Richard Partington told Robin. She says, the lion growls. Robin understood at once. We must go, he told Will and Little John. We are no longer safe. The king is going to arrest us. Soldiers of the king came looking for Robin, Little John and Will Scarlet. But they were too late. The three men were already far away. Chapter 10 A long time passed after the archery competition. In London, King Henry was dead, and a new king, King Richard I, was now King of England. But nothing changed in Sherwood Forest. Robin and his merry men were still inviting rich guests to their feasts, still taking their money and still enjoying life. One morning, with the birds singing loudly in the trees, Robin woke up. It is a fine day for an adventure, he said. And after breakfast, he and Little John went for a walk in the forest. The sun shone through the leaves, and there was a gentle summer wind. Robin and Little John walked quietly together, and after many miles, they came to a fork in the road. I have an idea, said Little John. You take the path to the right, 
and I take the path to the left. That is a great idea, replied Robin. But be careful and stay out of trouble. Ha! Huh, said Little John. You are more likely to find trouble than me. Robin laughed, and he and Little John shook hands. Robin didn't know it yet, but his most dangerous adventure was about to begin. As Robin walked along the path alone, he listened to the birds and smiled. As usual, he was feeling happy and whistling while he walked. Then he came to a big old oak tree. There was a man wearing strange leather clothes and standing under the tree. He had a large metal helmet on his head. At his side, there was a sword, a dagger, and a bow. Hello, said Robin, coming forward. You have strange clothes. The man took off his helmet and stared at Robin. His nose was like a bird's, his eyes were as black as night, and his lips were thin and cruel. What do you want, fool? he asked. Dear, oh dear, replied Robin. Did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? If you don't like my words, you can leave, replied the man. But I do like your words, said Robin, so let me hear more. The man stared at Robin, and Robin stared back. At last the man spoke. What is your name? he asked. My name, replied Robin, is not as important as yours. The man laughed. I am Sir Guy of Gisborne, he said, and I am a famous outlaw. The Bishop of Hereford and the Sheriff of Nottingham sent me to Sherwood. I have an important job to kill Robin Hood. My reward for killing him, he continued, is a pardon and two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds? The man laughed. For one hundred pounds? I don't mind killing my own brother. Robin was furious. He drew his sword. You are looking at Robin Hood, he shouted. Sir Guy moved forward and, sword in hand, he attacked Robin. It was Robin's hardest fight. Twice Sir Guy almost killed him. But then Robin tripped and fell to the ground. Sir Guy lifted his sword, but Robin caught it and held it with one hand, and with the other, he killed Sir Guy with his dagger. A moment later, Sir Guy lay dead at his feet. Many years ago, Robin killed a man in the forest, and he always felt sorry about that. But he didn't feel sorry about Sir Guy. Quickly, he took Sir Guy's bloody clothes and put them on. It was time to visit the sheriff. Chapter 11 While Robin was looking for the sheriff, Little John was in another part of the forest, walking slowly and whistling happily. What is Robin doing now? Little John was thinking when he saw an old woman. She was sitting outside her small house and crying. What's the matter? asked Little John. The sheriff of Nottingham came to my house this morning with his men and took my three sons, she said. Why did he do that? My sons killed one of the king's deer because we were starving, the old woman replied. And now the sheriff is going to hang them. Little John became angry. The rich do not care about the poor, he said. That is the only crime. 
he thought for a moment. Can I borrow some of your son's old clothes? he asked. When the woman agreed, he put on the clothes, told the old woman not to worry, and ran off to find the woman's sons. He did not have to go far. The three brothers stood under an oak tree, and three nooses hung from a branch above them. Next to the brothers, the sheriff's men were standing and arguing noisily. They did not agree with the sheriff. They did not want to hang the men. The sheriff was sitting on his horse, watching. Fools! he cried. Hang these thieves now! His men looked at each other. No one moved. Can I help? The sheriff turned and looked down. A large man in dirty clothes was looking up at him. Who are you? the sheriff asked. I am a poor man, little John said. But I can hang these thieves. All I want is a few pennies. The sheriff smiled. Go ahead, he said. Little John went to the three brothers. He put nooses around their necks, but he also secretly cut the ropes around their hands. Don't move, he whispered. When I shout now, run away as fast as you can. Little John picked up his bow. Now, he cried. The three brothers lifted the nooses from their necks and ran into the forest. Little John aimed his bow. The sheriff's men were running towards him. He was about to fire when suddenly his bow broke in two. At once, the sheriff's men pushed him to the ground and tied his hands with rope. The sheriff laughed. Robin's right-hand man, Little John. Excellent. Now it is your turn to hang, he said. Sheriff, said one of his men, Sir Guy of Gisborne is here. The sheriff turned and saw Sir Guy walking towards him. Tell me he is dead, the sheriff said. He didn't recognise Robin, because Robin was wearing Sir Guy's helmet. The blood on these clothes is the outlaw's blood, said Robin in a deep voice. I killed him an hour ago. You murderer, shouted Little John. The sheriff was delighted. You are going to be a rich man, Sir Guy, he said. What do you want? You can have anything you want. Give me little John to kill, replied Robin. Is that all? laughed the sheriff. He is yours. Put him against the tree, said Robin. He drew his sword. I don't use ropes to kill people. The sheriff smiled again. Do it, he told his men. The sheriff's men took Little John to the tree, but then they walked away. They didn't want to watch. With two bows over his shoulder, Robin walked towards Little John, sword in hand. When he reached his friend, he secretly cut the rope around Little John's hands. Then he threw off Sir Guy's helmet. Robin Hood? said the sheriff. No, I don't believe it. When the sheriff's men saw Robin, they ran away. Come back, you cowards, the sheriff shouted. But they didn't. The sheriff was alone with Robin Hood and Little John. He turned his horse around and began riding away. Little John took a bow. 
He aimed and fired. The arrow hit the sheriff in a strange place. When Robin Hood and Little John saw this, they laughed and laughed. The sheriff had to sit on the softest cushions for many weeks. Chapter 12 Two months after Robin and Little John saved the three brothers, the new king, King Richard I, decided to travel north and visit Nottingham. That day, the streets were full of people. Everyone wanted to see their king. First, 28 of the king's men blew their trumpets and rode past the crowds. Next came 100 knights. Finally, King Richard arrived on a big white horse. When the townspeople saw their king, they cheered and cheered. It was a happy day for Nottingham. That evening, there was a great feast, and King Richard and his men sat with the Sheriff of Nottingham, Sir Henry Lee, son of Sir Richard Lee, and the Bishop of Hereford. Music played, people danced, and one thousand candles burned. Soon, they began talking about Robin. The sheriff told the king that Robin was the worst outlaw in England, and the king almost believed him. But then, the king spoke to Sir Henry Lee and Sir Henry told him all about Robin and the money he gave to his father. When Sir Henry finished, the king turned to the sheriff again. Sir Henry tells me that Robin Hood helped his father, the king said. When the bishop of Hereford heard this, his face grew as red as a cherry. Sire, said the sheriff, Robin Hood is an outlaw. He and his men rob... Yes, yes, I understand, said the king. You can have some of my men to arrest him. But first, I want to meet him. I want to go into the forest tomorrow. But I don't want him to know that I am the king of England. The sheriff thought this was a stupid idea. But he kept his mouth shut, and so did the bishop. Can I suggest, sire, said Sir Hubert, one of the king's men, that you disguise yourself, perhaps as a rich friar? A disguise? The king thought for a moment. Yes, excellent idea, Sir Hubert. The king smiled at the sheriff. Do you want to come with me? he asked. When the sheriff heard that, he almost fell off his chair. He lied and told the king that he was too busy. So the next day, the king and Sir Henry put on friar's clothes and rode into Sherwood Forest. The king took one hundred gold coins with him. It didn't take long for Robin to find the two friars. He could smell the shiny yellow coins. As usual, Robin thought the two friars looked hungry and, as usual, Robin invited them to a feast. He did not know that he was about to rob the King of England. When they reached the camp, Robin spoke to the tallest of the friars. Food is not cheap, dear friar. Can I have some money? he asked. The king gave Robin one hundred pounds, but Robin returned fifty. This is enough, he said. Now come and eat. The feast began, and Robin, his men, and the two friars ate the delicious food. After they finished, Robin decided to have an archery competition. Robin competed against three of his men. They were good but Robin was the best. That was excellent archery, said the king to Robin. 
Did you learn to shoot an arrow like that in the king's army? No, said Robin. Sadly, I did not. I taught myself. The sheriff of Nottingham made me an outlaw, so I could not fight for the king. But I wanted to. All my merry men wanted to. This pleased King Richard greatly. At that moment, Little John ran into the camp. Next to him, riding his horse, was Sir Richard Lee. Robin, cried Sir Richard, the king is going to send his men to Sherwood. You must come to my castle and... Suddenly, Sir Richard's face turned as white as milk. Chapter 13 Sir Richard couldn't believe his eyes. The tall friar next to Robin was the King of England. Sir Richard jumped off his horse and fell to his knees. Sire, he said. As soon as they heard this, the merry men knelt too. Sir Richard, said the king, you came to warn Robin and tell him about my plans? I am sorry, sire, Sir Richard said, but Robin is a great man and helped save me. Sire, Sir Henry said quickly, please do not be angry with my father. Please don't forget Sir Richard saved your life many times. The king was angry, but when he looked at Robin, he smiled. You were an outlaw? But you and your men love England and your king. Raise your head, he said. Robin looked up, and the king lifted his great sword. He then rested it gently on Robin's shoulders. You are no longer Robin Hood the outlaw, said the king. Now you are Sir Robin of Loxley. My king, said Robin, I thank you, but what about my men? The king turned and spoke. Men of Sherwood, I pardon you all. From this day, your job is to protect the forest, your king and England. As soon as they heard this, Alan Dale began to sing and the men began to laugh and dance. Everyone was happy, but the biggest smile belonged to Robin. Robin Hood, the outlaw, the robber of the rich, the sheriff of Nottingham's enemy, was now Sir Robin of Loxley, the lad with deep blue eyes and hair the colour of gold remembered when he first came to Sherwood all those years ago. He thought about all of his adventures with Will Stutely, Alan Dale, Will Scarlet, and, of course, Little John. Finally, he thought about the Sheriff of Nottingham, and he imagined his face when he heard about today. Then Sir Robin laughed. And he laughed. And he laughed. <laughs>